Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. A new version of the Raspberry Pi OS has been released. This is based on Debian version 12 and there are some big ticket items including Wayland and a Pi optimized version of Firefox. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive straight in. This is Raspberry Pi OS version 5 and it's based on Debian version 12, which is called Bookworm. Now, uh, Bookworm, what, why is it called Bookworm? Well, Debian distribution code names are based on names of characters from the Toy Story movies. We had Jesse in 2015, Stretch, if you don't remember that, that's a, a plush purple octopus toy from Toy Story 3. In 2017, we had Buster, that was Andy's uh, pet dog in 2019. Bullseye, that's Woody's horse in 2021. And now Bookworm in 2023. Apparently Bookworm was a minor character, there he is, uh, in Toy Story 3. So what's new in Debian 12? Well, Debian Bookworm itself is mostly made up of incremental updates of the software that was in the previous Bullseye release, but there are some small changes, including a new malloc implementation, me malloc, a general purpose allocator with excellent performance characteristics as a drop-in replacement for the standard malloc uh, library uh, function. You've also got the uh, kernel based uh, Samba server. So it's a Linux kernel server, which implements uh, SMB3 protocol in kernel space for sharing files over a network. And there's read write support for the Apple file system, Apple's proprietary file system for Mac OS Sierra, that's 10.12.4 or later. So these are just what you get if you were to download uh, Debian 12 on, on anything on a PC, whatever you want to download it on. But of course we're talking about the Raspberry Pi, there are more changes. So there are some specific things now in Raspberry Raspberry Pi OS version 5 that are not coming from Debian itself because Raspberry Pi OS isn't just Debian, it's a port of Debian, it's based on Debian, it's got loads of other things and the big thing is it's now using Wayland by default on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 5, we'll dive all into all of these in a moment. Pulse Audio has been replaced with Pipewire. Network Manager is now the default network controller. And there's a Raspberry Pi optimized version of Mozilla Firefox. Absolutely brilliant news that comes available. So Wayland, so let's just talk Wayland for a minute. Most Unix, Linux desktop environments, including the Raspberry Pi desktop, have been based on the X window system. Uh, and X version 11, the version 11 of the protocol, was released 36 years ago. So as you can imagine, it has various limitations for modern computing. So many Linux distributions. It had a great thing that it, let me just cut into it. It was great that it was ubiquitous. I mean, any kind of Linux, FreeBSD, any commercial Unix, you could, you know, you could use X11 and it would just work. However, most Linux distributions are now moving to Wayland, a replacement communication protocol that specifies the communications between the display server and the clients so of the same idea, the same model as X11, but a different protocol with a different approach to many, many things. And the primary advantage is performance. You get better performance with Wayland than you would with uh, X11. So under X11, there are two separate applications involved in drawing a window. The display server is used to create windows on the screen and give applications a place to draw their content. And then a window manager is used to position windows relative to each other and decorate the windows with title bars and frames and the little like, maximum minimize buttons and all that kind of stuff. Now under Wayland, these two functions are combined into a single application called the compositor. So an application only needs to talk to one thing rather than two in order to get windows drawn. And that's a major difference in the design. And therefore uh, you get just instant performance boost just from that one thing. Of course, there are other changes as well in Wayland, but we won't go into those now. Wayland itself is just a protocol. As I said, Light is the communication protocol between the display server and the client. In order to use it, you need a compositor uh, which supports Wayland. Now, previous version of the Raspberry Pi OS used the Mutter window manager, which could function as a Wayland compositor. However, it wasn't ideal. It didn't work as they really wanted. So for Bookworm, the Pi now uses a compositor called Wayfire. This uses a standard Wayland library called WL Roots, Wayland Roots, which is used by several modern Wayland compositors. And because Wayfire works a lot better as a Wayland compositor on the Raspberry Pi than Mutter did, Wayland 5 is now the default mode of operation for the desktop on a Pi 4 and a Pi 5. 
Now the performance of Wi-Fi on earlier platforms is still being optimized, so for now they will continue to run the old X11 display server and the open box window manager. But at some point, note this, at some point these platforms will also switch to Wi-Fi. So it's gonna be Wi-Fi across the board, Wayland across the board for Raspberry Pi in the future. Today, Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5. Now on the desktop, when you boot up, everything should look the same. Uh, there's actually a new uh, wallpaper, but that when you first look at it, you think, oh, it's a Raspberry Pi desktop, but underneath it isn't the same at all. So there are a few things you can start to spot to see this really is different. There's a taskbar at the top of the screen that allows you to launch applications and see the status of various systems. But this is actually a new application, a new taskbar under Bullseye, this application was called LX Panel, but this has now been replaced with WF Panel Pi, short for Wayfire Panel for the Raspberry Pi. This is based on WF Shell, the example panel application from the authors of Wayfire, but it has been extensively modified to look and work just like LX Panel did in previous versions. The largest part of this work was to port all the existing LX Panel plugins, the icons for controlling the volume, the network, the Bluetooth, and so on, because they're all there, but they now work under Wayland rather than using the old system. So a lot of work's gone on by the Raspberry Pi people to get this working and to make it almost as seamless as possible. The desktop background itself is still drawn by the old PC Man FM file manager, which was used under Bullseye, but this has been modified so it uses Wayland as its display protocol rather than X11. So it is now a native Wayland application. So they really have done a lot of work here to move over to Wayland and make it as seamless as possible. How individual applications work in a Wayland environment depends on how they are written. The standard graphic toolkits like GTK QT are now Wayland compliant. They can detect when an application using them is running in a Wayland environment and they route all the graphic calls over the Wayland protocol running as native Wayland applications. Now, most applications that come pre-installed with the Raspberry Pi desktop use one of these toolkits and so they are basically native Wayland applications. Now, there are some toolkits that don't understand uh, Wayland stuff, and so they may just talk directly X11. Now the Pi's Wayland implementation includes a piece of software called X Wayland. This is an X server that built on top of Wayland. It handles all non-graphical parts of X itself and passes any graphical parts to the underlying Wayland implementation. X Wayland is designed to launch automatically as soon as the application receives anything from X. So it should work seamlessly. So there's basically a compatibility layer on top, which means if there is an application that doesn't know anything about Wayland, isn't built using GTK or QT or whatever, and it's using X11, it can still work. So this is absolutely fantastic. Now we mentioned there are these uh, plugins, of course, that came with the LX panel. There are two new ones that come with uh, this new version of the desktop. There is a power plugin which monitors for power supply problems like low power voltage or excessive USB uh, current. Now, of course, those usually come up on the screens and overlay. Now you get them here on the desktop and they are very, very important because you know, with all the different versions of the Pi, where you need different amounts of power because it depends what you've got plugged into the USB port. With the Pi 5, you need more uh, power as well. So it's good to have that warning there. And there's also a GPU plugin which shows the load on the Raspberry Pi's GPU. I love this, this is brilliant. Uh, so just like the CPU plugin we used to have, which we still do have, this one actually gives you the GPU usage. Uh, it's not enabled by default, but it can be added by right hand clicking on the taskbar and choosing add remove plugin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Pulse Audio has been replaced with Pipewire, offers better support for audio accompanying video. It reduces latency, which of course is important. It manages Bluetooth devices better, remembering which ones were in use at power down and automatically recollecting to them. Finally, it's designed to operate better in the more secure Wayland environment where applications are actually uh, isolated from each other. So it's a better way for the new desktop that there is with Wayland and everything. So all good there. Low latency, better Bluetooth. What more could we ask for? Now, Network Manager was released in the previous version. Bullseye It's now the default network controller. Does everything that the old system used to do, but it has some added functionality. And now if you click on that little thing up in the top right and call the two arrows there, you can go to the advanced options and you can connect to hidden wireless networks. You can create a wireless hotspot. You can add a VPN connection. And of course, then you can go on to edit your uh, connection information just like you did before. So lots more customization also available for those who like to fiddle the nitty gritty of their network connections. So a uh, plus all round there. Now here's the other great thing. We've now got Firefox officially for the Raspberry Pi and they've done a brilliant job in bringing this. This is a Pi optimized version. It supports the V4L2 codec so that Firefox can utilize the hardware H.264 decoder on the Raspberry Pi. 
on older models of the Pi, this significantly improves the performance and reduces CPU load when playing back a uh, high quality video. There's also support for Widevine, which is used by a number of online streaming services. There have been graphical optimizations that improve the performance on a range of websites on low power devices. And for video calling, Firefox on the Pi works out of the box with the CSI cameras using Lib Camera. Uh, no, so you don't have to just use a uh, USB camera, you can use the built-in one uh, using the little ribbon connector. And it works with desktop sharing on Wayland. Now just a few gotchas to mention along the way, the Wayland security model prevents traditional remote desktop access. And so a new VNC server has been used called WayVNC instead of real VNC. Now it's a bit more restrictive in terms of the client applications that connect to it. So you need to use Tiger VNC client for the best results. I did try it on a couple of other clients, didn't work. Tiger VNC does work. However, also note that when you do enable it, going into Raspberry Pi configuration, you don't get that little icon coming up now on the top menu bar. It's just, you just connect to it and it's, it's enabled. Okay, so that confused me for a little bit. I was like, well, how did that, where do I, where's the setting? How do I confirm? It just, you have to just connect to it. And that's as simple as that. Now the previous uh, server, the real VNC server is still there in Bookworm and it's used on the Raspberry Pi models that don't yet run Wayland. The 64-bit version works fine, but the 32-bit version is currently not compatible with Bookworm. That means if you need desktop, remote desktop access on a Pi Zero, a Pi One, a Pi Two or a Pi Three, it's best to stay with Bullseye. Do not upgrade for the moment because you're going to get yourself stuck if you need that remote desktop access. A few other things mentioned, the Blue J and Green Foot Java IDEs are incompatible with Wayland and the Sonic Pi is incompatible with Pipewire. These are third priority programs, so they have been removed until their developers are able to update them. Okay, so there you go, Raspberry Pi OS version five. Why don't you give it a try and tell me what you think about it in the comments below. That's it, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <music>